All right, Ted, what's the next step? I mean, obviously, we'd like to get it cranking, so we need to replace the solenoid, right? Yeah, let's just replace that, then we can actually crank it with a key instead of channel lock. Oh, wow. Keep flooring it! Whoop. And then we gotta figure out if it's getting fuel, so can we find a fuel line? That's what I'm looking for now. And uh, the more knowledgeable American car mechanic can walk right to it. I'm gonna have to... Can we pull this guy off? Yeah, I was yeah. gonna try and get the crankcase breather off so we could lift it out of the way. And... And, yeah, let's uh, do that. Locked up my channel locks on the earlier. I have to say, if, if ever there's a tool that's the equivalent of having a hammer in your toolbox, it's channel locks. And if we wanted to, you know, we could we could disconnect that right now and try back blowing through it and see if we can hear anything bubbling out the gas cap. Let's try. It. I'm yeah. I'm good with it, you yeah. know. Because uh, if we can get if we can get air going through the fuel line. There we go. There we go. Yeah, I just have to walk away from it. So yeah, if we had air going through the fuel line, for that matter, yeah, see that's a good bet right there. So. It looks like something you used to extract a tooth, Ted. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not removing a whole <laughs> worn out uh, fuel line. I'm, I'm, uh, I just want to be a dentist, sir. Okay. All right, so we're going to blow, so, yeah, some, let's, uh, blow some air through there, see if we can get it going. Yeah, oh. and um, uh, do you have, is the, I assume it's a lock and gas cap. I don't know. But let's open it up and, and uh, I'll drag out some compressed air. So what I'm hoping is that we can just back blow fuel through the lines mechanical fuel pump it may not make it but if, if we're successful you should be able to hear some hissing out here some bubbling but don't put your ear right over it because sometimes you'll get a spray of fuel coming out and uh, it doesn't taste as good as you'd hope so we'll we'll try stuffing some air in the front or failing that because there's little one-way reed valves in the fuel pump I may just try pressurizing the tank with this air and seeing if fuel will come out at the carburetor end and then at least we know it's not clogged with ancient Ancient fuel. That, that, that'd be smarter. Let's do that. I just bought this on uh, on my way home from Cars and Coffee. Just I've, I've been telling myself to get a portable air tank for exactly this kind of house call. So uh, so after we talked, I thought, okay, I'm tired of not having one. So got it together, and it'll either work or it won't. We can write that down. Now if I can punch a hole in it. So far, so good. Like, well, my bit. So I'm just gonna inflate it and hope. See any fuel or hear anything anywhere else? Yeah, we did. Nothing, I'm crushed. Hmm. I think that's gonna be, uh, that's gonna be our bad luck for getting it driving under its own power. This is much more than a car to me, and I'll tell you why. If you look at the color, it's this kind of crazy baby blue, and in high school, when I had a chance to go to my prom, there was, of course, a girl who now calls herself Jean, but back in the day, her name was Jeannie, that I had an eye out for, and I thought I could impress her by taking her to prom in a very special car. But, here's the really funny part, to really impress her, I thought that I would match the color of the car to my tuxedo, so yes, I had a baby blue tuxedo, when I went to prom with Jeannie in this very car. And let me show you something else about it. If you, if you look over here, 
you'll notice that there is of course a faint but still noticeable TVR. Uh, and that stands for Tom, Vera, and R for Roman. I'm an only child and when my dad bought this car, he wanted to thank the entire family that we was able to make it in America, so that's why he put TVR in it for Tom, Vera, Roman. It's loosely possible too that if we pressurize the tank while we're cranking on the car, the combination might get some some old bourbon colored fuel to come gurgling out of there, but uh, we'll see. And on the off chance that the clog is here, but usually this is one of those things where you take it to the shop and you put it up in the air on a lift and you find all the metal fuel pipes and you remove them and either replace them or sometimes you can just run carb cleaner down them in a long wire or an old speedometer cable and like a roto router and get them de -gooed that way, you know. Uh, but sometimes you get lucky. We'll see. Does it have a horn? <laughs> Out of my way! <laughs> Great. Yeah. There's gonna be no mixing that up with a semi. All right, for all you youngsters, back in the day, cars actually had these. I'm sure you know what they are. They're keys, but not just one, but two keys. One was for the front door and the ignition, and of course, one was for the trunk. That would be the round one. So let's see what this time capsule has inside of it. There is, of course, starting fluid. So we've gone down this road before. Oh, check this out. Oh, my mom, Woman's World, April 1994, $2.50. But what made the Lincoln Continental Lyman Jubilee special was that it came with, check this out, its own toolkit. And to make sure you knew it was a Diamond Jubilee Edition. Looky there. And really classy. It had leather straps. So let's see what's in here. Let's see what they gave you. Hey, Ted. Look at that. Was that Paige? Yeah, come on. Look at this, Ted. Diamond Jubilee Edition. We have a full toolkit. And I packed my box. You did. Look at this. Maybe you still work. <laughs> Let's find out. <laughs> we should find There's out. There's your answer to that vinyl top right there. All right, I promise you this, guys. If we get this car fully restored, we will find out if these actually work. It might decrease the value of the car because, of course, we'll have one less flare in the toolkit. <laughs> but look, they even give you a Diamond Jubilee Mark V toolkit. And it says everything that's in there. This is the kind of stuff that makes this car really cool. Yeah, look at this. Look at what's in here. Let's see what's in here. This looks... Oh, check it out. Look at that, Ted. Look at that. Look what we just found. Look, wow. wow! Two uncut keys with the Lincoln insignia. <laughs> That's classy, huh? That is cool. What's in this pouch? Check that out. See what's in that. There's a pouch within a pouch. It's just like being arch archaeologist. <laughs> Without the actual respect that archaeologists would give it. Ooh, <laughs> amber spare bulbs. <laughs> <laughs> and, and fuses. <laughs> ah, it's like they knew the car's future. Wow. Look. Ah, I think this is a little. Uh, oh, it's a little. It's a little. It's a little uh, light. I thought it was maybe like a little test light. So this is pretty. This is pretty cool. Bus fuses. Yeah. Except no substitutes. And of course. Let's see. Yeah, batteries, and all. If they say ever ready. Bright Star, no. made in the USA. Yeah. Remember when <laughs> things were made in the USA like this car? <laughs> I bet you couldn't even find a battery made in the say, USA today. I was wanting to see the Ever Ready with the cat, but <laughs> close enough, you know. <laughs> Putting some fresh gas in the tank. We think that might help a little bit because right now it looks like the fuel lines are varnished up. But no harm done by putting some fresh gas in, a couple gallons, and maybe we can get some fuel actually go into the carburetor. We replaced the solenoid, and if I were, you know, a little sharper, I would have hooked it up right the first time. Um, and then the car wouldn't crank at all, because there's a wire in there with an open, but if you hold it just right, and if you hold your tongue like this, 
then the car will crank over and uh, Tommy just did that and it sprayed nice smelly old fuel out of our open fuel line. Uh, light credit, good. Okay, stop. It is spraying still. It's not a lot, but uh, it's something. Stay. So we have fuel. It's coming through. It's coming up to the carburetor, but the little float needle a lot of times oh, could be stuck. Yeah, so I'm going right. to try and just unstick it with the compressed air. Okay. We still have some of that left over. It's possible that with the old fuel now flowing into it, we've just doused it and flooded it. So I mean, it's possible. I don't know. It's so hard to tell. This is always uh, the case, isn't it? You never know if it's flooded or if it's not flooded with the carburetor. It is hard. It is hard to know. Yeah. If, if it kind of if it'll just so much as spit and give a little sense of running, then you can kind of tell if it's starving or flooded. But when you got nothing, we you don't just know. don't know. You know that 8-track player that you were showing yeah. last time? Yeah, what you got there? My friend Brett gave me this. All right. It seems like it's more appropriate for you. <laughs> what is it? I like the old box. <laughs> the old box is, yeah, that's... that's <laughs> oh, uh, all right. I love it. Look at yeah. that. A whole collection of... Yeah. Okay, we, we gotta pick one of these and uh, oh, this one, this one. Look at this, <laughs> Engelbert. <laughs> oh, last of the Romantics. Now, see, I was going for the theme from a man and a woman because that movie, the camera car was a Citroen, but the guy, you know, the Mustang, that 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 it's a horrible. All right, film. all right. Which yeah. one of these? Which one of these will we put in the A-track player when, when we finally get it running? Come on, one of them. You pick. Da, 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 all right, da, da, a man da, and a woman. Da, da, da. Yeah, that's it. That's, that's it. it. All right, that's the one. Movie, but, you know. If we ever get it running, we're, <laughs> we're gonna rock and roll to that. All right, <laughs> uh, go back to work. Yes, sir. And you can hear if, it, if there's any hissing. Okay, coming out of there. Yeah. That's a good sign. Yeah. <laughs> you don't need any hissing. That's, okay. Well, it's <laughs> old fuel. Yeah, it's old enough. <laughs> <laughs> so let's, shall we try it one more time? You know, other than a big old flame out, what can go wrong? Let's do it. All right. Yeah, okay, now we're good. <laughs> Again. That is the sound of a 1978 Diamond Jubilee Edition Lincoln Mark V purring like a kitty cat thanks to my man Ted X over there. It runs, it runs like a hundred bucks. Ted, I gotta hand it to you, man. You are the man. Thank you very much. <laughs> Opinions vary, but thank you, Roman. You rock. Now, okay. as long as I hold my hand right here, we can probably go drive it. <laughs> now, come over here, Tommy. Next time on the fast lane car, we're going to get this guy on the street, hopefully. Well, if you look back there, there's a bit of a problem, Ted. We have a camper behind us. So we're going to have to get that cleared out of here. Ramming speed! <laughs> Ramming speed. This will do it. <laughs> Ted, I know you work on British cars, but there's a simplicity to American motors, right? I mean, after nine years of not cranking, it just cranked up and ran right away. So you never get that kind of luck on, on British cars? Uh, yeah, no. <laughs> How about French cars? 
Better, better chance. Better <laughs> chance. All right, so now we have to get it running so you don't have to hold the wire. All right. And what do we need to do next once we get the camper moved? Boy, I think uh, once we get the camper moved, we fix that wire so that I'm not going along for a ride. See if the I'm a work? big fan. Of, yeah, and you, you know, you'll know if the brakes will do something just by stepping on the pedal. Yeah. I mean, if there's something there, then there's something at the wheels more often than not. And uh, and continuing with our cavalier attitude about the whole thing, I say we just test the brakes in service. Uh, <laughs> and also, let's make sure that the gearbox works. Well, you know, and, and, and one click into the little R position will tell us that, at least about reverse, which is the one we're interested in out of the box. And uh, I'm kind of optimistic. Yeah, I, I, am, mean, I am too. I've got it. This is a good old car, you know. It's got a lot of history and it's treating me nicely. And so are you. So thank you for doing this. So next time on the fast lane car, we're going to get that camper moved and we're going to get this uh, car hopefully on the road and see what else uh, the old Diamond Jubilee needs. As always, this is Roman and Ted <laughs> saying thanks for watching and see you next time on the fast lane car. Nathan Adel here with the Fast Lane Car, and look what I'm in front of. It's the brand new Mazda CX-5 with the bigger engine, the 2.5 liter. Mwah! We're gonna do a zero to 60 test coming up really, really soon. <laughs> All right, Nathan, I have to say, I'm getting a little tired of these zero to 60 tests. So we're gonna do one with a twist.